Mmm, it's old. It's got nostalgia. And it's still pretty awesome. Would you like to talk about this too? Come on. He's here too. So now we're gonna finally talk about Ghostbusters. John is back. He was the one who reviewed The Rocketeer and Blade Runner with me last year. Mind you, we had a little bit of something different in our drinking glasses, but this time we have to not do that because we're about to go off and see more movies. So the reason why I wanted to stay and wait and talk about this with you is because, as you've told me before, this is your fav one of your favorite movies of all time. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, so I've been watching this movie since I was very little. My parents bought the VHS tape sometime before I was born, and I wore the hell out of it watching it practically on a daily basis for a few years there. Ghostbusters came out in 1984. It stars Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, Harold Ramis, and... Who's the black guy? <laughs> in this film, they are paranormal investigators who get, basically they start up their own business as the Ghostbusters where they go around and capture ghosts. And the film is very funny, it is very comedic, and it actually has some pretty good special effects for 1984. A couple times, chunky, but most, most of the effects are good. Yeah, they stand up, especially the practical effects, like at the very beginning of the film when they're in the library and you're seeing the how the cards come out. Of yeah. the, that was pretty cool. There's still cool. a few effects in there that you have to question how they managed. Yeah, to do exactly. That. Like the eggs when the when the yeah. eggs pop out of the uh, the, of the cart and yeah. start cooking on the counter. Yeah, that was pretty cool. Yeah. Does this film stand up considering it's over 30 years old? I think it does. I think it is still exceptional. It stands up so much that I still think it's probably one of the two best uh, Dan Aykroyd films, uh, other being than Blues Brothers or something else you mentioned. Great Outdoors. Yeah. So, the film is still very exceptionally well done. The humor in it is absolutely gold. The timing of some of the jokes, especially when, I love it when Bill Murray go when they go on, take on their first ghost, they take on Slimer, and he comes to this table and he wants to try and take off the, uh, was it the tablecloth? And nothing would fall off. He pulls it, Everything falls except for the flowers, like, and the flowers are still standing! <laughs> oh, and then there's also this, like, the little cues. You like the thing that Harold Ramis does just before they open up the vault. Yeah, he's trying to warn his friends without telling everyone else that what the cops are about to do is going to cause the entire building to explode. So he just does that little hand gesture, and while everyone else is standing down there being idiots, the, uh... The main characters are slowly but surely saddling up the staircase. And speaking of that asshole who opens up the vault, that joke with him and Bill Murray is still gold, no matter how many times you watch it. That joke, of like, is this true? That's right. This man has no dick. That is still one of my favorite jokes from a comedic movie ever. I think that scene is so well done. And yeah, the whole movie, the, the thing that I've always kind of found odd is how they take on Gozer. That that scene still kind of weirds me out a little bit. And for the black dog. Yeah. Well, no, that no, that joke is hilarious. I mean, how they have to shoot at the thing that it's coming from. I think they meant that because um, they said something about the flow. Oh yeah, the, the flow. Gate. I assume that means like the the energy of the ghosts or whatever. True. When they shot the gate, it all got sucked back in. I guess that's true. But also how they don't die from that explosion. That explosion on the top of that building is huge. Yeah, no, there's no one in New York will have any hang-ups about exploding high rises. <laughs> oh yeah, there's another part that I love about this movie is when uh, when Sigourney Weaver and Rick Rick Moranis? Rick, Rick Moranis are both Moranis. Rick Moranis. They're both possessed by the gatekeeper and the key master, right? And they they come up to each other and Rick Moranis is just like this. And Sigourney Weaver just like takes hold of him and it's like, if I was Rick Moranis going up to Sigourney Weaver, knowing what I would have to do in the next scene, I would act the exact same way. Yes, Sigourney. Oh, Sigourney mm, Weaver. Sigourney. Mm. But in the end, I think Ghostbusters is still a classic for many reasons. Its effects, its characters, its writing, just how kind of absurd the, the story is, but actually how well it flows. 
and I think it still stands up to the testament of time, and even the sequel's still pretty good too. So I guess we're kind of still a little bit mm, about this reboot that's coming out. Closing statement, if you haven't seen the sequel, go ahead and see it, especially before the third movie comes out this summer, because who doesn't want a talking painting played by that long-haired dude from Die Hard with the voice of, uh, with the voice of, uh, fuck, what's his name from, from The Exorcist? Oh! Max von Sydow mm -hmm. voices the Goonie from Die Hard in Ghostbusters 2. Oh, that was Max von Sydow! Did you didn't recognize his voice? No! I haven't seen 2 in a long Mission time. Mission Goomer! <laughs> I, Vigo, the scourge of Carpathia, come on you! The power of Christ compels you! So in the end, Ghostbusters obviously gets a 7 out of 7. This film is still fantastic, it's still classic, and it's hilarious to watch, no matter how many times you've seen it. And yeah, so now we're on to go and see Looper, Inception, and Wrath of... <laughs> Done. <laughs> anyway guys, that's all from us. I guess I'll see you later.